welcome to The Sound Bath with me, Angelina Kalahari, your host. The Sound Bath's objective is to talk about and listen to music with particular emphasis on the human vocal instrument in an informative, educational and questioning manner. The Sound Bath programs are recorded live, meaning not in a studio. Therefore, you will experience some ambient noises and echo equality to the recordings. Please be so kind as to ignore those and instead enjoy the content of the programme. Please also remember that it's illegal to download music from here. It's better to support the artists by buying their music in stores or on Amazon or iTunes. That way we can ensure that they'll be able to continue to make music for us long into the future. Thank you. Today I want to talk about Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter Adam Lambert's song, Outlaws of Love. The song was premiered at his show in Canada in July 2011 and he said that it's a definite for his second eagerly awaited album due out early in 2012. I was lucky enough to be at the show in St. Agath and to hear the song sung live for the first time. The initial impact of this seemingly simple song hit me extraordinarily powerfully on every level but mostly physically at least first of all. It's been difficult ever since for me to listen to the song without becoming somewhat emotional. Adam's Outlaws of Love is certainly a deeply overwhelming song. So overwhelming in fact that after his performance of it I couldn't really remember what else he'd sung and later had to reconstruct the end of the show from YouTube videos posted by fans. The only thing I do remember is that because of the torrents of rain that suddenly appeared, the canopy above the stage sagged with the weight of it. And as I was standing right in front of the stage and directly underneath the canopy, you can imagine buckets and buckets of water came crashing down on me. It came down so fast, in fact, I felt I couldn't breathe and was in danger of drowning because there was no getting out from under it or away from it. But once I'd allowed myself to relax and not to panic, I don't think it's dramatic to say it felt like a waterfall of Adam's love. And it reminded me of the waterfall pictures I habitually use on the YouTube videos of my programs. And I knew then that I simply had to make a program about this special song. But you've been warned, so be prepared with a tissue or two. You're going to need it. There are several reasons why I think this is a very important song. The first reason is because the lyrics deal with a subject matter almost never attempted in songwriting, and certainly never in this way in which we, the listeners, are being told what it feels like to be outlaws of love. As a professional singer myself, I'm naturally very interested in lyrics, but I'm not an expert in analysing them. I leave that to Dr. Philippa Semper for later in the programme. Equally, although I find the melody haunting, beautiful, and perfectly and poignantly working with the lyrics. Beyond acknowledging that the song was written using the pentatonic scale, I will leave the more in-depth discussion of what the music is actually doing to Elizabeth Dockrell Tyler to cast her expert eye over. Secondly, I feel this song will change the way non-fans perceive Adam Lambert. Not only the over-the-top, makeup-wearing, campy, sexy singer with a great voice, they must now learn to appreciate, too, the serious artist, as his fans has known him to be from the beginning. Thirdly, this song is a departure from anything Adam has sung before and shows how far he has come in his artistic development and songwriting skills. This song is truly a piece of art. And finally, this song for me feels like an ancient chant almost, and I think it touches that part in us where we're all human and vulnerable. But first I would like to focus on Adam's voice and what he does with it in this song. I'll start by saying that every singer has a sweet spot in their voice, usually referred to as their tessitura, which means it's the most comfortable range for the singer's voice, where the tone, colour, timbre and texture of the voice sound the best. Some singer's tessitura sits over a few notes, for others it's more. In Adam's case, it would seem as though his tessitura spans throughout his entire, rather formidable range, which, by the way, seems to grow wider when I hear him again after each disappearance from live performances. 
and sometimes I wonder if he somehow inhales new notes to add to his already impressive stash. His voice sounded particularly rich in harmonics and seemed to have a new energy when I saw him in Canada in July. No doubt because he'd been hard at work on his new album and had been singing with some top producers in the studio. To my ears, his vibrato also seemed tighter and more consistent. But it might just be what he's consciously chosen to do with the song. It is a testament, however, once again, of his astonishing techniques. I should point out that music also has a tessitura. This does not mean the range of the music, but merely the part of the music over which most of the vocal line sits. The tessitura in Outlaws of Love is irrelevant in this case because the song has been crafted for Adam's vocal instrument specifically, which means that his and the song's tessitura are completely compatible. Having said that, the way in which Adam sings Outlaws of Love extends its tessitura over two octaves, rather unusual for a song in the modern genre because most pop songs have a range of around one octave. But bear in mind that that is not necessarily its actual tessitura. Of course, Outlaws of Love is not a pop song, but a ballad, and a very, very good, well-crafted one at that. But before we take a more in-depth look into what Adam is doing with a song, I'd just like to take a brief overall glimpse at his vocal on Outlaws of Love. Once again, we can hear the exquisite long legato lines, the gorgeous open vowel sounds, the sensitive and unexpected phrasing, the emotive nuances, the light and shade, and the use of breath and breathing as part of the interpretation, all elements so characteristic in Adam's singing. As the song has not yet been released, other than the YouTube versions of it recorded by fans at the show, there is no official CD or MP3 available. So let's listen now to an expertly edited version of the song, produced from bits and pieces of footage, thanks to Adam fans Talkwit and Fierce Alien, used by another of Adam's fans, the wonderfully talented Lambozest. If you've ever wondered who's behind making those astonishing improved versions of fans' videos posted on YouTube, here is a little background on her. Usually a karaoke show snob, she got sucked in after hearing Adam's great voice at his American Idol audition, an amazing voice during Hollywood week, and he blew her away as a performer during Satisfaction. After googling Adam and seeing his range, there was no way back for her. She taught herself how to edit video and audio to get the maximum out of all the available media, without flaby arm obstructions or shaky camera work to detract from the enjoyment. As the recordings have gotten better in quality, she can now choose the best angles and may spend days trying to enhance the feel of the performance and to make something beautiful that people would want to watch over and over again. And we do. <laughs> Unfortunately, due to a bad cold and a sore throat, she was unable to chat to me this time, but she has kindly sent us her responses to a few very quick questions I had put to her about Outlaws of Love. This is what she said. She says she thinks Outlaws of Love was a fabulous treat for fans, rewarding their loyalty. But in hindsight, it was also a very economical way to keep Adam in the public eye as the song got picked up by the media who ran articles on it. She reminds us that Adam once said his biggest fear was being forgotten about. So she thinks this has done enough to maintain people's interest. She thinks Adam is best appreciated through the medium of YouTube and she sees YouTube as essential for artist promotion. It's a great indicator of an artist's popularity. People watch only because they want to. So I'd like to thank Lambazest, not only for participating in this programme, but for all the art she puts out there too. And I think I really agree with those sentiments, don't you? So here is the song.
His performance in St. Agath was wonderful too. Adam was very still, using mostly his face and his wonderfully expressive eyes only to enhance the beauty of his voice. And of course, that's very powerful and focused the attention even more on the stunning beauty of his voice. A quick word about the accompaniment, which again Elizabeth will go into a little more. But I wanted to point out that whilst the accompaniment is with a guitar only, here Monte uses an electric guitar, whereas we might have expected an acoustic one. But the electric guitar is capable of those exquisite slides between notes, which the acoustic guitar would not so easily and effectively be able to do. But those slides between the notes adds further to the overall melancholy feeling of the song. Also, the accompaniment is very sparse, so that Adam sings the song almost a cappella, as I said before, which is a real treat as we can clearly hear his voice, but it's also very clever because it helps the song to sound even more tender and gentle whilst continuing to give the song an edgy modern quality. 
As with any song, a singer will first explore the basic tempo and mood markings, typically set out at the beginning of the music by the composer to guide the musicians and singers as to how to perform the music. For example, where to stress a note, where to lengthen one, where to change the tempo of the music, where to emphasise a word, where to breathe, etc. Not having had the opportunity to look at the music and going only by how Adam sang Our Fools of Love at Centre Garth, and because the tempo of the song was performed there at 60 beats per minute, we can say with some confidence that the basic tempo is larghetto, which means rather broadly. The basic mood marking might be affettuoso, which means with passion, emotion and feeling, very expressively and tenderly, exactly how he sang it. But beyond these very basic markings, of course, this song is Adam's own creation, so we may never be privy to the other markings contained within the music, unless he publishes it. Another thing a singer might immediately notice is that the song appears to be structured in three sections, as the verses seem to have a section A and a section B, followed by a chorus. This, together with the seemingly simple lyrics and melody, makes it easy to learn. Adam is both a highly intelligent and intuitive vocalist, and it is always a masterclass when he sings, and fascinating to see how he uses his voice and his artistry. So let's now take a closer look at how he sings Outlaws of Love. At the beginning of the vocal line, the short, sharp intake of breath, just before the first word, oh, in the phrase, oh, nowhere left to go, makes that whole line feels like it's nearly too painful and private to say the words out loud. <laughs> Listen also to the second colder in this verse. It sounds almost like a sob. Adam's classical training compels him to sing those dazzling open vowel sounds he does so well and which helps to create those beautiful long open lines we all adore him for. But listen to how he next sings the words same, rain and change. He's singing here rather pointedly on the consonants M and N and it's a masterstroke because it suggests intense emotional pain. You'll also notice that on the words same and rain, the melody goes up, which seems contradictory to the words. And on the word change, Adam sings three notes instead of only two, as we perhaps expect him to sing. This makes for a more musical, satisfying sound experience, whilst the word itself opposes that. Hey, tears are for the same, we all feel the rain. Next comes the chorus, and because we can experience the rhythm more clearly during the chorus, we feel comforted and almost rocked as though in a lullaby. The beats before the chorus, followed by the higher note on the word everywhere in the phrase everywhere we go, is what makes us snatch our breath and what makes the chorus so effective. In the clip to follow, we can clearly hear the difference it makes when we don't hear the verse first. The way Adam sings a fractionally longer, more musical note on the word on in the phrase we're always on the run gives the impression of movement along with the musical line and the actual words. Movement is further emphasised as a result of singing through the word run. <laughs> however, in the next phrase, conveys a feeling of acceptance, of already having forgiven the they who said we'd rot in hell, but it could so easily have been sung in an angry way. We'll come back to this later in the programme when Christine Smith shares her views on outlaws of love with us. We might have expected Adam to take a breath after the word enough in the phrase They've branded us enough outlaws of love, right? 
But because he sings it as one phrase, the meaning is immediately clearer, more poignant. And the note on the word love at the end of the phrase is so gracefully filled with a longing we sense might never be fulfilled. This could so easily all have been angry or sung in an aggressive way, but instead it's empathetic, tender and tolerant and therefore so much more powerful. The second verse again feels as though he's experiencing private painful thoughts and feelings. Scars make us who we are could have sounded defensive. Instead, it sounds wistful and almost meditative. And the second, broken, again sounds like a sob. Scars make us who we are. Hearts and homes are broken. After the word far in the phrase far, we could go so far, strengthens his plea. Listen also to how he lingers once again, just fractionally longer on the word so in we could go so far. It conveys a sense of both longing and of wisdom. And again, he combines the two phrases, we could go so far and with our minds wide open, which reinforces the meaning of the words. Far, we could go so far with our minds wide open. Then a slightly longer all in we all feel the rain suggests a sense of inclusivity beyond merely the words as the sound of his voice is warm and generous. And the definite T in we can't change lets us know that it's not possible for anyone to change their core self, even though who they are may be deemed unacceptable. We all feel the rain, we can't change. The wonderful coloratura improv Adam does after having sung the chorus for the second time, where by the way the everywhere in the beginning of the chorus is more emphasised feels like he's crying. The effect is enormously emotional for the listener, not only because of the stunning beauty of his voice as it climbs to the higher notes beyond those of the song, but because this crying does not seem to stem from anger or victimhood. One has the impression that it comes unbidden as a result of a deep sadness on the one hand and complete acceptance on the other. This is just how things are, at least for the moment. Also, the vowel sound he's using reminds us of the word love. take a breath just before the final singing of the chorus which conveys the feeling of a pain being held in. Then on the line well I don't think we will for the first time we hear a kind of defiance which seems like the willingness to fight for what he believes in. Adam's voice displays a raspier sound, which reminds us of the sound a voice makes after having just cried. Another reason that this song in particular is so powerful is because Adam sings it entirely forward in his mask, which is why even on the consonants the sound is clear. 
and it is also the reason that the sound travels so deliberately and hits us so specifically. Adam has a particular genius for using his voice to infuse the melody and lyrics of songs with a much deeper meaning than many other singers are capable of doing, and so it's wonderful to hear what he does with his own songs. We already know that he changes songs to make them feel different, fresh and new each time he performs them, so I can't wait to hear what next he does with Outlaws of Love, although I have to say I just love this version. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 